Father, it's good to be in your presence. It's good to be in the presence of your people. There's just something about being in the presence of your people, that special way that you promised that you would be here with us when we gathered in your name. Man, I crave that. Man, I love that. And I'm so grateful to be here tonight and to, to just feel your presence. I ask that that presence would speak to everyone here. I ask that that presence would go out across the airwaves to anyone who's listening or watching online. And Lord, could you keep us online tonight? We could, it's not going so well. We could really use your help with that. Um, and just go out to those who are watching who, who aren't with us here tonight and, and let them feel your presence. Speak to each of us with what you would have us to hear from your word tonight. Even if it's not what I, what you have given me to share. Thank you so much for your love and your grace and your mercy. And all this I ask in the blessed and beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, welcome to the Wednesday night service. Yeah, everything's falling apart tonight. Nothing works. It's all right. You missed. So, welcome to Wednesday night service. I'm Carl, and we are going through the life of Jesus chronologically across all four Gospels. And tonight, we are in Mark chapter 14. Anybody been keeping track? Anybody know how far into this we are? How many, how many episodes? There has been 150. Somebody was paying attention, yes. Yeah, I did put that up on Facebook. This is episode installment number 150. So we've been at this over three years. I think there's probably 50 left between now and Jesus' ascension, conservatively speaking. Uh, but we're at episode... Or installment 150 of this series. So, Mark chapter 14, beginning at verse 3. <clears throat> and being at Bethany, at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard. Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always. And whenever you wish, you may do good, do them good. But me, you do not have always. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priest to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. So he sought how he might conveniently betray him. This is the word of the Lord. Father, it's good to be in your presence. It's good to be in the presence of your people. There's just something about being in the presence of your people, that special way that you promised that you would be here with us when we gathered in your name. Man, I crave that. Man, I love that. And I'm so grateful to be here tonight and to, to just feel your presence. 
I ask that that presence would speak to everyone here. I ask that that presence would go out across the airwaves to anyone who's listening or watching online. And Lord, could you keep us online tonight? We could, it's not going so well. We could really use your help with that. Um, and just go out to those who are watching who, who aren't with us here tonight and, and let them feel your presence. Speak to each of us with what you would have us to hear from your word tonight. Even if it's not what I, what you have given me to share. Thank you so much for your love and your grace and your mercy. And all this I ask in the blessed and beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. So, for many weeks now, we have watched our hero make his way through this very long final day of his public ministry. Day three of Passion Week, the 12th of Nisan. The day began as leaders of Israel questioned Jesus' authority. Jesus' response was to show that they had no authority before God. The fact that they would actually question him was proof enough of that. The rulers then sought to diminish Jesus' standing before the people and find reason to arrest him by asking him questions concerning the law. Jesus turned every one of those questions into an opportunity to show that their understanding of God and his law was systemically flawed. Jesus then warned the people about following after the scribes and Pharisees. While they taught what was right, they failed to practice what they preached. While they were the authority on the things of God and they taught the people to follow the law, they themselves did not keep it. After pronouncing woes upon the scribes and Pharisees for their acts of hypocrisy, he immediately began